So there are usually two parts of the brain that are excited by an action and the amygdala is one of them. And basically you can prove behaviorally if you're monitoring the brain, for example, through various techniques, whether someone is excited by an activity. And so when we're excited, we're switched on. We're ready for our response. And so this is the same part of the brain that's switched on and comes to light when drugs kick in. And so people have said that social media addiction is even worse than drug and alcoholism for the main reason that it does more to excite the amygdala than even these other pleasurable activities, inverted commas, pleasurable. And so if there is a natural reaction by us when we receive a message, because it's meaningful to us as a human being, then it's only natural that these kinds of software programs will propel people to stay on longer and longer for different parts of you know, the day. And that's why people go back and check their Facebook account several times a day. Uh, I was teaching to a, a group of young children um, from year nine back in 2005-06, when social media had just started to pick up. You had the auspices of MySpace and so forth coming online. And I asked a general question to them because I wanted to gauge contextually where they were at. I said, how often do you log on a day? And they laughed. What do you mean how often do we log on a day? We're always on. We're always connected. There is no, I'm not checking something. And so when this becomes a natural habit because when we are not excited, when the amygdala is not active, it's not expecting our response and we go back down to a, a level that's generally considered normal, then we feel sad. We're off that high. We feel like, well, maybe somebody doesn't like us out there. Maybe my friends have forgotten about me. Maybe I'm being left out. Let me just check again. You know, somebody surely must have sent a message to me. And so this is playing out a bit like a game of ping pong. I hit the ball, I expect the ball to come back and then I'm ready for the next, next play. And so if we're always working at an excited pace, anything other than that pace is boring. And so when young people today say, oh, well, I'm bored, they're not just saying I'm bored because there's nothing to do at home. It's really about I'm bored, nobody sent me a message. But actually that's never the way it's been. People don't send messages and report on everything that they do. They don't over-report. They don't confess their, their biggest secrets to the world on the internet. That's not how we've acted as human beings in the last 2,000 years. So what's changed is this fix. I'm looking for the fix. So I log back on, inverted commas, logging back on. I check my Facebook account. Even if I've just switched it off three seconds ago, I'm just going to boot it up and I don't even know why I'm doing it. That ping that comes through my handset, I'm going to you know, have a notification feature for Twitter, I'm going to have a bell for Facebook, for G+, for Tinder, for this, for that, for that. Ding, 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 ding. Look, I'm popular. Look, I'm, I'm wanted. I'm good. It's a narcissistic kind of reaction, although the individual doesn't realize in actual fact why they're getting a buzz out of hearing the ping on the phone. So while you're talking to me, and I'm listening to those pings, I'm not going to let you finish your sentence. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to say, sorry about that. Since when was the ping on the phone more important than the person next to me? And yet it's so controlling. It's so overbearing that you can't stop because you're waiting for that dopamine to kick in again. Yes, I'm liked. Yes, I'm valued. A message for me? Really? It kind of rem reminds me of that episode of Mr. Bean. And he's spending it. It's a bit of a sad episode. He's spending it at home during Christmas with his teddy. And he writes a Christmas card to himself. 